A beautiful, heartfelt good morning to you all. I say heartfelt because here we go again. It happens this way over and over and over again. It's beyond my explanation, it's beyond my any my 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 brain power to extract anything from this other than the simplest of meanings. I got up this morning, I felt quite tired, and with the tiredness came a little bit of, oh, you know, t today I'm, I'm not even gonna bother doing a video. Um, I'm not gonna bother going on social media. You know, um, I don't want to communicate with anyone. You know the kind of day I'm talking about. And I am only human at the end of it. And I've reluctantly lit the stove. I thought, oh, I'm going to have a shower and, you know, perk myself up a little bit. And, you know, I was kind of indulging in that, oh, poor me thing, which we all do now and again. And... About half an hour ago, the postman called. And he handed me a package and a letter. Inside the package was a beautiful series of gifts from someone who has been through a lot in her own personal life. And the gift was all the way from Australia. It was a beautiful letter, so I'm not going to mention her name because I really want to share the letter with you. And I hope, hope, hope that you, beautiful woman, don't mind me sharing this letter. I think the letter will help a lot of people. It certainly has helped me this morning because it's put everything back into focus, you see simply back into focus. And what happens when we lose focus is that we go inward. So, I want to thank you first of all for the beautiful gifts in the package I've got teas and dried fruits and the most beautiful fretwork um, um, beautiful hanging well it's going to be a hanging ornament for me um, and this lovely letter that I want to share with you and um, so all these beautiful gifts you know gosh I just I kind of feel well I don't kind of feel I feel overwhelmed by them And the letter inside the envelope was a beautiful card. And that came all the way from America. And I think I can mention your name. Jamie, I want to thank you so much and for the donation inside the card. Very, very helpful to me at this point in time. Thank you so much. So I'm going to share this letter that I got in the parcel all the way from Australia and um, I've been in contact with this beautiful lady before um, but the letter you see, um, the letter perfectly describes what I would describe as a magical healing process magical i use i always use the word magic or magical for things that are beyond our vocabulary in terms of explanation all right so when i say magical it's beyond being able to put into words but the reason why i want to share the letter is that this beautiful lady has put it into words so 
go into the tunnel because I've got a um I've got this <laughs> insulated mug filled with lukewarm coffee. <laughs> Look at this. It was tucked under my arm. So just check the seat, there's no water on it. It'd only be sitting in a pool of water. This is a beautiful card, look. So thank you so much, Jamie. Um, I'll, I'll read Jamie's card. Dearest Colette, happy Ostara, happy full moon. I wanted to send you a little fairy in honour of your next book. I can't wait. I, th I thank you for your YouTube videos and all your healthy wisdom. Sorry, healing, healing wisdom. I hope it's healthy as well. <laughs> um, I can put my glasses on now. Hope this um, little bit helps towards your work and maybe a special treat for you and Jack. Or maybe to go towards the next goddess statue for the well. There's always the birds. <laughs> I think I think I'm going to be dividing it up between all of those, um, starting with the birds because I need to go and get some more food. Now, just on that note, actually talking about the birds, uh, my son uh, rang me from Canada yesterday. He had a lovely, lovely long talk. And he was saying, um, you know, Mum, I've I've gone through a whole sack, <laughs> a whole sack of, of bird food this winter. And I thought, and I said to him, well, I've gone through about, um, f I think I'm on my fourth sack of peanuts um, and they're 20 kilos in each one. And I think I'm on my third or fourth sack of bird food, you know, with, you know, the mixed, uh, beautiful mixed grains and whatever and um, um, sunflower seeds and you know the beautiful bird food you get um, I said I'm he said mum are you feeding the birds all the year round I said now look I've had a long think about this we have we I say we as a human race we have in the most um, dreadful way taken away the bird's habitat we've just we've just taken and taken and taken and taken without a thought for wildlife and then we complain about birds or we complain about insects we complain about everything I said I will feed the birds for as long as they keep coming because there's lots of food here at Bealtaine Cottage during the late spring and summer and early autumn. And in fact, all the way through the year for specific birds. For example, you know, the, 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 the thrush will gather up the snails and eat them. I said, but as an act almost of penance, and I don't really believe in all this penance stuff, but I'm, I'm looking for another word and I can't think of one at the top of my, top of my head. So I'm just reverting to my old Catholicism. <laughs> um, as an act of penance towards Mother Earth and um, all the habitat that I inadvertently have helped strip away. All right. I will keep feeding the birds. Because it's important to me that life blossoms in every which way here at Bealtaine Cottage. So we had a long conversation then about that, you know, and um, he could see where I was coming from and um, could see, could understand the, um, the rationale behind what I was saying. Because if someone had have asked me 10 years ago, you know, would you feed the birds all the year round? I'd say, oh, no, absolutely not. No, no, you've got to leave them to their own devices during the summer, etc., etc. We've just taken too much of what belongs to them. 
so we have to balance it. And as we balance it, we keep planting. And hopefully we will re-establish a union with the life around us. Right, so I'm going to read this letter. I'm not going to show you the letter because I, I, I think the privacy of this beautiful lady needs to be kept. Unless, of course, you, if you're listening, my dear friend, um, unless you want to, you know, leave your name to something, that's up to you. But anyway, so here's the letter. Like I say, I hope you don't mind me sharing it, but I think it's important to share this because there are so many people having experience in difficult times. And uh, I think this will be of help. Dear Colette, I'm sitting here at home enjoying my day off work. It is a very warm and humid day, sunny day, here in sunny Gold Coast, Queensland. I'm overlooking my forest, my garden forest, whilst typing this letter to you. I hope you enjoy the little gift. Some are, um, some are my from my local area, like the dragon and mango fruit and lemon myrtle tea. Colette, I discovered your beautiful Bealtaine Sanctuary after the worst event of my life. The death of my 22-year-old son, Alexander. Your Bealtaine transported me to a most serene and healing place in whose early brutal months in my grief I would watch your videos and follow your Facebook. Now you see people why I'm reluctantly but I'm back on Facebook. I would always feel inspired and uplifted by your talks and garden walks and the interesting history you share of your beautiful Ireland. I would smile at your beloved fur babies and the love you have for them and they for you. I have always loved plants and surround myself with them. One can never have enough plants. I think the birds would agree with you there. I love a jungle and let my plants roam and grow naturally. I especially like herbs and plants for our bees and butterflies and birds. Your Bealtaine inspires me so very much. I thank you for what you are doing and the message and teaching you are giving to us. My grief is lighter these days, though the sadness is always there. Through much prayer and walking close with our Lord, the love of my family, my garden, my work colleagues and your special Bealtaine all have helped me so much to keep going these past 22 months. I just want to share a little story of my beautiful boy, Alexander. He gave me a Mr. Lincoln rosebush a few years ago for Mother's Day. He loved red roses. The year he died, 2017, it hadn't flowered. All through 2018, no sign of a rose either. I would pray for a rose each time I went out for my garden strolls. Around November, my Mr Lincoln produced fresh growth. I was excited. Later came a teeny bud. Just on Christmas of 2018, my beautiful Mr Lincoln flowered and a most glorious, fragrant rose. My answered prayer, my faith is my rock. 
The body dies, but the love continues. Love is eternal, and the soul lives on. Miracles are all around us. The beauty is there if we open our hearts and see beyond the veil. Thank you so very much, Colette. I'm keen to try your bread recipe when our hot weather leaves. I enjoy your books very much and looking forward to your new book too. Sending warm hugs to you all at Bealtaine with love and gratitude. So, that was important to share. And I want to say one thing actually, because your faith has helped you and I think that whatever we believe in is simply our own personal manifestation and understanding of love. And the reason why I say this is that Christopher Hitchens, I've said this before, Christopher Hitchens, an ardent atheist who believed in nothing in terms of the spirit world, the afterlife, faith. I won't say religion because faith is much deeper than that. But one of the last, if in fact it may have been the very last public statement he made, and it was at a book signing um, in, I think it was New York, it was a book signing, and um, he, I think, I think it was a week or something before he died. I mean, you know, you could see he had suffered the ravages of chemotherapy. He'd lost all his hair. He'd got very thin, very frail. And you could see he was on his way out of this mortal world. And he said to this little girl, she asked him something. I can't remember what it was. Um, she asked him something and he turned round to her and he said, in the end, there is only love. And what you're listening to now with the bird song is part of the manifestation of that love. When you love, you care. It appears that any any day that I that I do arise um, feeling feeling down or feeling maybe a little bit depressed or um, feeling that I um, Maybe feeling resentful. I don't know. There's all, there's all kinds of negative feelings that can bombard us for all kinds of reasons. But it just seems to be that any day that I get up feeling like this, and they're not very often. They're few and far between. But this happens. The postman pulls up. 
there's a parcel, there's a letter, there's something there that brings me right back down into the centre of Bealtaine and why I put so many videos up. Why I feel compelled and happily compelled to make another recording. Isn't life interesting? So much synchronicity, so much energy at work and play that we just haven't got a clue about. And this is why I scoff at so many YouTube channels that talk with so much certainty about anything and everything. Well, the stove should have heated up the water by now. I'm going to go over and I'm going to start uploading this little video. Um, whilst I quickly pop in and have a shower, iron some clothes, um, and then I'm going to take, you know who, back down to the Blue Bell Wood. Because when I was down there yesterday, um, I've seen some interesting things that I want to explore further. Now, uh, I will bring my camera with me and um, take some photographs at the very least and um, with, with a mind to do it another little video. So, thank you my Australian beautiful lady and thank you Jamie and thank you not only for your gifts and your thoughtfulness and your kindness and your generosity but thank you for reminding me what this is all about you've helped me touch base you've kicked my derriere to the pavement, except there's no pavement around here. There's just grassy paths. So I've had a soft landing. Blessings to you all. <laughs>